Pre-workout nutrition is overrated. Oh, wait a second. I disagree with that. Today, we're going to talk about why I disagree and what you should be doing with your pre-workout nutrition, whether you're 30 minutes out from workout, an hour, or even four hours out from workout, and it, nutrient timing does matter. Just might not be for the reasons you think it does. Why does a pre-workout meal matter? We're simply trying to fuel training to produce a stimulus that supports adaptation. And so with that being said, we also want to be providing a start to recovery. And this is for the fueling aspect, physically and mentally. We want to be able to sustain muscular contractions, feel strong during a workout, and mentally, cognitively, feel locked in. So this is the whole premise of why we'd want to be doing a pre-workout meal. But the question comes in, does that really matter all the time? So when you're deep in the off season, you're pretty much in a glycogen glycogen loaded state at all times. And with resistance training, our primary source of energy is going to be glucose and the breakdown of glycogen to provide that glucose. It's not really going to be amino acids. A lot of the research you see that comes from burning amino acids and we worry about muscle breakdown comes from long duration endurance training, not necessarily resistance training. So glucose, again, is going to be our main substrate. But in the off season, it's not often that we're going to be glycogen depleted to any degree, pretty much be kind of glycogen loaded at all times. So in those instances, when you have these mixed meals that are occurring, it's likely that nutrient timing and the type of meal you're having before training is going to have a little impact. However, there are instances where this absolutely is going to matter. Well, for one, we could definitely make a case for a contest prep where you are in a glycogen slightly depleted state at times more so than others. Uh, you also have a higher training volume and that very well could be where you'd have applications for more important for nutrient timing providing glucose. Now in the off season where we also see this situation occur could be from longer fasting durations. So after an overnight fast, sleeping for eight hours, maybe it's nine hours before you actually get going and up in the morning, that actually could have a, a, a slight glycogen depletion. And then if that's followed by, maybe you're following a higher volume program that for some people I know extends for two hours. We're, we're now very getting into reasons why having enough carbs present before training with some amino acids, of course, makes a lot of sense. And we do have research that supports this as well. A meta-analysis by King's 2022 reviewed 21 studies and found that when exercise sessions extend beyond 45 minutes, and there's also, or could be included an eight hour fasting window prior to training, that carbohydrate had an ergogenic effect to resistance training. So carbohydrates absolutely apply in many cases. We know many bodybuilders that train for longer than 45 minutes and very well might be training early in the morning. Also a key, no matter the time of day, especially if you're training early in the morning, there's a paper again by Juddelson, 2007, looking at hydration status and seeing small declines in hydration, which easily can happen if you're sleeping for eight hours at night, have effect on resistance training performance and poor performance equals poor stimulus and poor hypertrophy adaptations. In another consideration around eating pre-workout, there's a paper by Naharudin, 2021, I'm butchering that name, looked at someone eating prior to training or another group having just water or another group having something that was calorie-less but just filled the stomach. And just the subjects feeling hungry during the training caused them to drop in performance. So simply having something in your stomach and not getting hungry absolutely has an effect on training performance. That might be some of the biggest application to your pre-workout meal. The thing also we don't want in training is going into workout feeling too full. So there's some data support when we should have nutrient timing absolutely matter. And what we should do with that is how should we be programming our meals based around this? All right, so how to eat, what to eat around training with all this in mind. And so this is definitely gonna apply to someone that's waking up probably early in the day, or if you're the busy worker, where you had a meal maybe six hours and you had to work the rest of the day and you need to get into the gym now, but you haven't eaten anything. So this is in that 30 to 60 minute window, something that can sit easy on your stomach and quickly get into the system is going to be more ideal, especially for someone that has a more sensitive stomach and can't eat a lot. This simply could be utilizing some essential amino acid powder or whey protein powder. You could do a carbohydrate powder. Then I'd recommend adding a bit of salt in it, as we mentioned around the hydration aspect. What I would suggest is using a rough guide of probably like an eighth of your calories per day at this time, as it's pretty close to training. This can be a three to one to zero ratio. So three carbohydrate to one protein and no fats within this meal. So it's not sitting heavy on your stomach prior to training. Now, if you're in that one to two hour mark to eat prior to training, you need something that still can digest fairly fast. That's not going to sit in your 
stomach too heavily. However, a little bit of fats might be allowable during this time. So this shifts us into a little bit more solid meal, which could be using like cream of rice, mixing some whey in, some bananas for some fruit added additionally, or if you're even closer to that two hour window, maybe adding some nut butter or nuts as well as some fats in this time period is gonna be absolutely fine to do. Now a rough guide for ratios here would be a two and a half carbohydrate to one protein, 2.2 grams of fat, or it might be trace fats if you are close to that one hour mark. And calorie wise, this would be a sixth of your calories for the day. Now, if you're in the two to four hour training window, this gets into just normal meal timing where you're gonna have enough time to digest your food. I just do a, a mixed meal of my normal meals for the day, which I have five meals, so it's gonna be a fifth of my calories coming from protein, carbs, and fats all together. And this ratio might look like a two to one, 2.5 grams of fat. Now, for my meal personally, it's around 130 grams of carbs and 60 grams of protein, and then also around 15 grams of fat. I have this actual numbers here. Again, the rough estimates I'm telling you, I don't have them exactly memorized, but for me, I have my first meal a day, which is chicken, eggs, and rice. I have a bit of veggies mixed in as well. And then I have a side of sourdough toast and a small bowl of berries additionally. Now, other meals could anything that you'd like to normally have, whether it's beef, rice, and some side of fruit, maybe leave out the veggies. It's again, trying to work within to make sure you're not getting hungry during your training, but you're also not feeling overly full. Now, once this two to four hour window starts to stretch closer to the six hour mark, and you're just having to get a meal in, you kind of revert to the, the prior uh, recommendation that I gave you. Do the quick shake right before you train. So the quick rundown, if you're close to training, do something low fat and fast digesting, might be closer to shake. If you're farther away, a normal mixed meal will be perfectly fine. Ultimately, with a pre-workout meal, choose what fuels you where you feel really good training physically, mentally, and also digestion wise. So nutrient timing, it's not dead. It just depends. Depends on what phase you're in. If you're in the off season, if you're in prep, it's going to matter a lot more. And then also depends on your personal preferences, digestibility, and just make sure you feel good during training. So don't let someone out there say, hey, you don't need this. If you hit your total macros for the day, you're totally good. But then you go train and you haven't eaten and you feel terrible. You go off your gut instinct, no pun intended. If you want more information, education on nutrition, training, supplementation, check out J3 University, where we go into deep dives on all things physique related. If you have questions, leave them down below and I'll talk to you next time.